Dylan. Hey, Matt. I want to see your tight <laughs> butthole. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, turned, I'm not, I'm not yeah. getting myself recorded saying any. Yeah, of the no, it like turned very, it turned very Beavis and Beavis and Butthead instead of yeah. the caller, but that's fine. <laughs> butthole. <laughs> Let me see your butthole. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> that's what they need to do. They dude, need to remake Black Christmas as a Beavis and Butthead no, skit. Uh, all right, I'm putting this in my in the ether. I need to try to do this. Yeah, possibly before the live stream event, uh, the Geekscape live stream event that will be on December 9th all day. Hey, we'll I, be there. Yeah, we'll be there. I need to t- take the footage from Black Christmas and pull out the audio and just put Beavis and Butthead clips underneath it. Where she's like listening to the phone, like horrified. Yeah, and yeah it's she's just like, just fucking Beavis and Butthead talking. <laughs> bunghole, bunghole. <laughs> There's no like that has to exist. We can't I'm, be the first people to come up with that idea. I I'm gonna check, and if we are the first people to come up with that idea, I am doing that edit and uh, <laughs> putting it sounds out. Sounds amazing. Um, I think we we kind of gave away what we're talking about this week, man. Just a we're little bit. About we're talking about Black Christmas, the original 1974 quotes around the term classic. Well, I'm just kidding. I think it's a classic, but I'm just not as big a fan of it as Black Xmas. But I've been, I've been very vocal about that ever since I watched both of them. Yeah. So this is definitely a pick for you, but it's also like a classic pick. Like it's it's Halloween. It's literally Halloween. Needed, this is this needed, is the 31st of October. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> I we, um, I I get what you're saying with why you would like. I feel like. Here's what I'll say. Here's my comparison. Mm. I feel like yeah. saying you like the 2006 Black Xmas. Now this better. is not a Halloween kills moment. No, where, no, like, no, no, remember, no, no. I was like going to bat for that movie he, just to piss people off. But. You're on my comparison. You're yeah. you saying that you prefer the 2006 Black Xmas over the original Black Christmas? Yeah. I feel like it's kind of similar to if you were like, well, I just prefer the 2005 House of Wax to the 1953 House of Wax because yeah, they're, they're such so different. different. Like, like it's just like, what is your personal taste in in this? Because I think yeah. even you would admit that Black Christmas is a much better made movie yes. than Black Xmas. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, and that's the thing, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about a lot here, where... Black, I know Black Christmas is a good, like, it's a solid movie. It birthed the slasher genre. It kind of birthed the killer POV shot. Yeah. Like, Like, I mean, this movie did so much and was so ahead of its time. And I think it's more of just the time that I saw it. Like, I had heard more about Black Christmas than, like, I had actually seen it. I actually didn't watch the original Black Christmas. I shit you not. Until Scream Factory put it out. Oh, see now I yeah. I tracked this down when I heard that Black Xmas was coming out because I'm like, well, I want to watch the original before I go to the theaters to see the remake. Well, so, I was 13 when the yeah. original Black Christmas. I was X- I was in I mean, college. The, the yeah, remake came out. So. But <laughs> but I mean, even watching this last night, I was like, God damn it, this movie is so good at being creepy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's and it's creepy. I'm going to basically rattle through all of my notes in a very quick succession because because they all kind of are just what makes this movie work for me is like from the very beginning, you've just got this creepy, ominous, like you're hearing really joyful Christmas music, but everything feels just off enough that you feel unsettled by what you're watching. All of a sudden, there's like these creepy, overly sexual phone calls but you still have this beautiful classic christmas music playing mm. underneath it and it keeps that theme going like like there's the scene where he is stabbing a girl in her bed but there's a children's choir singing outside yep. of the house like the way that they blend all of the christmas music with these like really horrific things happening is is really really unsettling and then finally just like that we get nothing on this guy. We yeah. know yeah. nothing. And like that was, uh, according to Bob Clark, that was very, very intentional. He was like, I want it, every person in the audience. As opposed to him being like, dude, I just don't know how to end this fucking yeah. Well, no, he was like, he's like, I think it's scarier if every person in the audience can build their own motive to this person. You know what I mean? Like, 
Is yeah. he just crazy? Is he escaped from an insane asylum? Is he an angry ex boyfriend? Is he a dude that like had his heart broken by these girls? Like we have no fucking clue why he's there, why he's doing what he's doing, and we'll never really know. And and I no. and I do think that that is one of the big things that I will give Black Christmas over Black Xmas is that I would also say that it's comparable to. 1978's Halloween to Rob Zombie's Halloween, yeah, where it's like, yeah. I like that I know nothing about this killing machine. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, very urban legend esque. And yes. I mean, they even take inspiration from that. Like, the call is coming from inside the house at one point in the movie. Yeah. So, and it I still mean, has that Bob Clark comedy in it because yep. you have to remember that this guy then goes on to make Porky's and makes like the Christmas story. And, you know, yeah. he, he is a comedy writer. Above all else, so he has like these stupid. I mean, they they're dumb now in 2022, but I'm sure in 1974, Fellatio Road was just like the fucking funniest shit that anyone had ever heard. I'm sure and they were dude, howling and rolling through the aisles. But like, this guy has an eye for like colors. Yeah, like, I mean that those like it, it's it's. I don't know. It's it's like just like in a Christmas story where everything can be very bland, but as soon as you get those like reds and greens, they just pop. They're so shiny and it it puts you in that that spirit even though a girl's getting stabbed with a nice pick like <laughs> And I mean Scream Fa- I cuz I've seen this movie let's see. I've mostly seen this movie on DVD and Blu-ray. Yeah. Um, I never was able to find like a VHS. I, I, it. I rewatched it on Shutter this morning. Okay, and I'm sure that that so, was the Blu-ray cut. Yeah, I think so. Um, this is one of those movies that, man, the Blu-ray restoration just makes those kills even more claustrophobic and yeah. terrifying. Because before it was usually a little grainy, it was a little dark. You could kind of see what was happening, but not quite. But like now, even just that very first attack, if it wasn't for the fact that it came out the same year. I would almost say like, oh, this pulled a lot of inspiration from Texas Chainsaw Massacre with how intense the close-ups are yeah. on everything. You know what I mean? Like it is, you are you are definitely in that room with the people as it's happening. Similarly to like the last thirty minutes of Texas Chainsaw, where you are you are the person being chased by by Leatherface when you're watching that movie for sure. And I mean. I know I've been like, oh, I like Black Xmas more. It, it, I do want to reiterate what Matt said earlier is very true. Like, it's they are, they are remakes in name only. Like, yeah. this is it is not a remake. Yes, I prefer that version because it is technically considered a remake, but it's two totally separate movies. So it's not that I like one more than the other. I just like I prefer that movie. Um, yeah. I'm watching that movie more. I think. That if this was a movie I had seen when I was younger, I would have been like, yeah, like this, this movie rules. And I totally, everything you are saying is correct. Yeah. I don't dislike this movie at all. I'm just like, okay, I've seen this. I've yeah. seen it because I saw, I've seen everything that this movie inspired. So I've always, when I watch it, I have to put myself in that mindset of this movie did it. First, and also, like, you got to put yourself in that like 1974 mindset. And this woman's answering the phone, and this dude's saying, like, cunt on, on the phone. Yeah, and, I was like, thinking I mean, about that. I'm like, is this is one of the wild. First, this had to have been one of the most vulgar films yeah. at the time it was released. There's no way, like, just in that opening scene, the amount of like fucks and cunts and pussies that are said, <laughs> I'm like, this is insane that this is 1974 and they're shooting this movie. Is this the most vulgar Christmas movie? Like, I know that, that yeah, we've got Bad Santa, but even then, they didn't drop any, like, This might be. It, it. Like, I mean, I... Well, <laughs> it's, it's also, not only would I say it's possibly the most vulgar Christmas movie, I also think... Of all of the Christmas horror movies out there, this is the most Christmassy. Like, I feel like yeah. this movie is just, it is like, and and I think part of the reason is like, if you're a diehard Christmas nerd, right? Yeah. You're always going to love the Christmas stuff from- Couldn't be us. Couldn't be us. No, not us. <laughs> but but if you, if you out there were, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're obviously going to love the Christmas stuff that you grew up with. That's always going to be like part of- your Christmas life, but you're also going to have this like weird soft spot in your heart for 
like the classics. You know, we love yeah. the black and white. It's a wonderful life. Like those movies feel like Christmas time to us. Yeah. And I feel like this movie feels like you take out the murder, <laughs> you take out the profanity, and you just look at how it's shot and what the soundtrack is. And this movie has more in common with an It's a Wonderful Life looking yeah. movie than like any other Christmas horror movie. It, it, really somehow juggles being very much a 70s film but with a very like 1930s christmas vibe <laughs> to it, it reminds me a little bit of the way i view sleepaway camp where i'm like if you took out all of the weird horror aspects of sleepaway camp i would still watch this as a weird fun summer camp yeah. movie i would love to watch these kids play softball for 2 hours whatever i <laughs> I'm trying to think what I was watching recently. There was something I was watching recently where, uh, oh, maybe it, I, this is gonna Hollywood Halloween ends. Actually, it was when I was oh, watching shit. the first. No, like the very first, like ten minutes of that movie. I was just like, I'd be perfectly content if like no one died, and this was just like a ninety minute movie about a really obnoxious babysitting gig with these yeah. characters because every character was so strange and weird, like. The second they were introduced, I'm like, I mean, we can hang out with these people for a little bit. Hey, man, we're not we're not going to get into it, but no. in my opinion, Halloween's Ends was a vibe. I liked it, and that's, I agree. that's where I will end my. The, my I will just on say it. I agree on that. <laughs> um, I know it actually. The the because it'll be out by the time this is out. We also yeah. did Paranorman for Horror Movie Nights Halloween episode. Yeah, and uh, I gave you a shout out on there. I, I oh, mentioned fuck. I mentioned Can't your wait. campaign against uh, Hocus Pocus and pro Paranorman. <laughs> um, I did like Hocus Pocus too, though. Yeah. Like I thought it was all right. <laughs> but I I think uh, I think for Paranorman, that's another one of those movies where it's like. I'd be perfectly content if like zombies never showed up in that movie and it was just yeah. like this wholesome little story about a weird kid who could talk to ghosts and like the friendships he made along the way. Like I, Yeah. Like, the, those the first like twenty minutes of Paranorman literally make me tear up. Like yeah, with the soundtrack and him just walking through the town. It's beautiful. And the it's, people are looking at him weird and I'm like, Oh, it's it's I would say like literally it's uh, us. <laughs> I, and this is not to say that I don't think the Paranorman is a very good movie. Yeah, but man. but basically up to like him playing fetch with his friend's dead dog, it is like a perfect movie. Like I'm like this yeah. is like like those first like 20 25 minutes, I'm like if this was a 20 25 minute short, I'd be like this is one of the greatest shorts yeah. that has ever existed. And that's I not to say that I think catch with the dead dog though. Yeah. <laughs> He's like no, you no, just no. throw it. I, no, that's what I mean. I love that. I love all of that. It's like if that was like the yeah. end of the it was just a short about a weird kid who finally meets another weird kid who wants to be his friend and that's like the closing shot it'd be like Aww. beautiful it's perfect yeah. like i don't need i don't need like the the zombies and the satanic cult or whatever yeah. and like it's like no i just this kid doesn't need the whole town to love him he just needs one person to love him yeah. <laughs> like, oh all my right God. so paranorman we talk that pause. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> we do um but yeah no this movie if we could cast a live action paranorman <laughs> Bob Clark, I do want to talk about this again. Yeah. Like Bob Clark's framing of stuff. I think that the scene where he's I already talked about it briefly, where he's stabbing the girl while the children's choir is singing. Yeah. It's also got that iconic shot that Bla that uh Scream Factory made the cover of their Blu-ray, which yep. is that he's all in shadow except for just the one eye lit. Yeah. And it's like it's so again, it's so unsettling. And uh, I'm not sure how much research you did, but three different people played that character in different really? ways. Yeah, I yeah. know that. So, like, one person was, like, the body of him in certain shots, but then, yeah. like, Bob Clark was the shadow of him. So if you only saw the shadow, that was Bob yeah. Clark. Him and someone else traded off doing the voices on the phone so that the voice was, like, not easily distinguishable. And then, obviously, the DP was the POV shots yeah. of him. Um, but it's, like... I think that that's cool too because you know in in this day and age we can kind of spoil a movie for ourselves by being like oh the actor who played Peter also did the voice of the person on the phone so like theoretically could that yeah. mean like like there's a whole I'm not sure if you I just it's learned. like all the scream stuff where you're like if you listen closely you can hear Matthew Lillard grunting in the the yeah ghost exactly face exactly well I was gonna say the most recent one is uh, are you familiar with the movie The Cable Guy with Jim Carrey yeah 
<laughs> yes, I okay. am. So we did an episode. We did a Patreon episode of that for Horror Movie Night. And when that I was doing sense. when I was doing research, I found out that there's a whole internet theory that I kind of love. Okay. That there's that famous scene. We are so off the rails. We're so off the rails, like, but you'll so but you'll get what I'm saying. It. You'll get why I'm talking about this. There's that they play the 911 phone call of Ben Stiller's character, and he's like, "I think he was Adrian or something," and yeah. it like doesn't quite sound like Ben Stiller. Um, people later found out that that's Jim Carrey. That Jim oh, Carrey did that. Fuck. So it's caused this whole internet theory of like, did the cable guy murder that brother and frame the other brother because they had like ruined something with a television show that he loved? Like he, they made him not be able to rewatch a favorite show from his childhood because they're they refuse to work together <laughs> like it's like that's such a cool like that could have been intentional it could have totally Holy been happenstance shit. but i love the world that it creates because of that one little thing that someone figured out where it's like oh that's jim carrey doing that phone call voice <laughs> like oh my god i feel like i haven't seen cable guy in a, at least a decade so I need to sit down and rewatch that with that mindset. That's way yeah. better than the uh, Tatum was in on everything for screen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Look, I I will admit that that is a dumb theory. It's just a fun <laughs> way to watch the movie. I if get you it. watch I the it. if you watch the movie and think, huh, I wonder if Tatum's in on this. All of a sudden, it's this. Look. I understand that yeah. this is how QAnon happens. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you look, you look for coincidences and you will yeah. find them. <laughs> like, yeah. But, Can we talk about like, dude? Black Christmas. MVP. Yes, Black <laughs> Christmas. MVP of like, and he he only popped up like periodically. It's not like he did a thousand horror movies, but he did pop up every once in a while. It was always fun to watch him pop up. In Black Christmas, he was in a. Uh, Tenebre, he was in, of course, he's most famous for Nightmare on Elm Street, and then yeah. popping back up in Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Dude, John Saxon is the shit. I love that man. He's the one person I'm really bummed I did not get a chance to meet before he passed. But yeah, he's... John Saxon is awesome in everything he touches. I just, like, to me... I feel like he does not get enough credit for the amount of charisma he just oozes when he hits the screen. Yeah, I mean, this whole... Honestly, this whole cast is pretty fantastic. Yeah. Like, they... But but it almost feels like... Um, how do I word this? It It feels like, at the time, you're getting these, like, young and up-and-coming actresses, for the most part. It yeah. feels very... Um, like he pulled people from like the local play scene, you know what yeah. I mean? Like there's there's almost like they are they are performing like they are on like a stage show drama, you know what I mean? Yeah. And but I think that that weirdly works with the movie, feeling even more unsettling. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna pull all these people at, and we're gonna act it out like this, but it just so happens that all these people are also fantastic fantastic actors and actresses <laughs> like like they really are this is a a gr absolutely great cast including the smoking hot i mean absolutely gorgeous beautiful i sent you the text this morning yeah margot kidder ah <sighs> whoo getting a little sweaty over here man she is so adorable and I think it's even better that she is just a drunk bitch this entire movie, and it's great. <laughs> you all right over there, Mian? Yeah, sorry. I'm reading. I was trying to see if I could find a uh, something. I was. I was like, I feel like there's a fact that I'm forgetting, and I was like checking trivia real quick. Um, yeah. But I did find that the original title of the script was just called "Stop Me" with a period at the end. Oh. <laughs> That, but, I don't think that would have been. <laughs> no, I don't think that would have been I don't very think marketable. That stuck. <laughs> stop me! Did you guys watch the Stop Me M uh, remake? <laughs> two thousand three <laughs> or two thousand six? Yeah, no, the cast is fantastic, and you're right. Margot Kidder is. I mean, they're all they're all cute in their own ways. Little, they're little all pregnant adorable. British girl, like I. 
<laughs> yeah, and that the guy that played Santa, like the guy with the afro and the mustache, yeah. he popped up on screen, and I looked at Teddy, and I was like, "That's peak seventy four masculinity yeah, right there, right there." Like that guy is just oozing machismo. So here's the problem with that. So this year, I'm going to try to repraise a, a Halloween costume that I tried six years ago and didn't go smoothly. Yeah, uh, which was Weird Al Yankovic. I love Weird Al. The Weird Al movies oh, coming out. Yeah, but uh, I'll, I'll show you a picture, Dylan. <laughs> so yeah. the problem was, I was going for Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> They're like, "Oh my god, <laughs> you got you but, nailed the fucking Black Christmas guy." <laughs> no, but I got seventies porn star. Was oh like my that. god, <laughs> yeah, dude, you are definitely seventies porn star in it up in that. Yeah, I think that I the, love it. We we jacked up the mustache trying to paint the mustache on. And yeah. uh, so, you know, I'm going <laughs> to have to give that a, a second shot. Try to get the mustache more hey man, appropriate. Well, that's what's nice about Halloween and Christmas is you get one every year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get another chance every year. But man. fuck Thanksgiving and Easter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love Thanksgiving. But Me for too. Real, fuck Easter. <laughs> I, I, uh, I just don't care about Easter. The way I worded it to someone, I was like, so my holidays go Christmas, then very close second is Halloween, yep. and then is Fourth of July, and then is Thanksgiving, and then the rest are just excuses to have a day off from work. <laughs> like, <laughs> see, like, all you have to do is rearrange Fourth of July and Thanksgiving, and you've got my list as well. So, so I will explain I'm my here. my reasoning real quick. Fourth of July, yeah. I like having the big fucking blowout party barbecue in that. the backyard. Yeah. Thanksgiving has kind of become just my parents and myself because all of my other siblings do Thanksgiving with their significant other's families so that they yeah, can do Christmas that. with us. So I'm like, Thanksgiving's more depressing to me, but I oh, do love, I do fucking love a good old fashioned Macy's day Thanksgiving parade followed oh, yeah, by like yeah, a bro. shit ton of food. Like I'm not going to complain yeah. about that setup, but I'd rather be like surrounded by like 50 to 60 people that I love and adore in a backyard, just like swimming and grilling burgers. Like that is, well, I mean, we've <laughs> talked about this before, like by this moment, and I'll say it right on 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 air. I'm fucking over Halloween. Yeah, like, like, yeah. like Halloween I could slip done. down to slot three. Uh, it <laughs> yeah, is possible like, that it could like, slip down. I just there. don't. And I think it's because because as we live Halloween every yeah, day of our exactly, fucking spooky dude. lives, like, so. I just don't. Yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. All I right. have watched. Can we decorate for Christmas now? <laughs> I have watched zero classic horror movies that I love so far this yep. month. Like it's the been like oh I've new stuff is, came out I watched but that's yeah, it is that time that I think we talked about it on here that I was like hey I watched Texas Chainsaw last night like yeah. that still holds up I think that's about it everything else has been like you said I watched Monsters I watched Hellraiser I watched Halloween Ends yeah. I usually I bum rush myself watch anything else I'll like bum rush the the day of like I'll be like all yeah. right it's Halloween. Let me just throw on some spooky ass shit for the day. Yeah. Like I'll actively not be up here doing any video edits and just focus on like being downstairs. If I have to edit some audio podcasts, dope. Like yeah. in the past, I've literally just gone to my parents' house because they're both at work and just hang out with the dogs and feel Aww. like I'm like 12, like just chilling with the dogs, watching it. horror movies, editing audio podcasts. Yeah. Also, they get a way better group of trick or treaters than I get. Like I'm kind of like yeah. hidden off in a weird spot where it's like, once like the the four kids that live in this neighborhood come to the house, it's pretty much done. So it's like, oh, I'm just gonna yeah. go and hand out candy where like all the kids are. Exactly. And if the weather's nice, we put out a nice little fire on the front lawn and like sit by the fire and hand out the candy outside. Like it's just a, it's a way better vibe than out here. Yeah. So and and also like we've reached a point almost in society where Halloween's kind of over. <laughs> like, yeah. like that's the <laughs> Halloween stuff came out in July <laughs> and now we're done. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's what I love. I, I forget what podcast I was listening to because they were talking about people bitching about like Christmas decorations being out in October. Yeah. But like they were like, look, like Halloween and Christmas like are the two biggest holidays where you've got to like decorate the fuck out of your house and plan like both of those deserve a month of pre like a month or two of preparation yeah. and it's like motherfucker if you haven't bought your like 24 foot skeleton yet and it's the week before halloween you ain't getting it set up no. in time anyway so exactly. like let the christmas people buy their shit yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> like, exactly, man. I don't understand. That's that. why Spirit Halloween opens in like September, like so that yeah. the people who actually want to do something go and get all the shit that they need and then plan out how they're going to decorate their lawn and house with it. No one no one goes in to Spirit Halloween that's like a diehard Halloween person the week before Halloween to start buying their animatronics and shit. No, dude. That would be chaos. I was chaos. in that shit in August. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I was in that shit in August when we went to see uh, WNUF2. Yeah. Like, I went or, to the one in Towson. It was great. Or if you're a broke-ass motherfucker like myself, you go November 1st when everything's on discount and load up for the next year. That's the one right there. <laughs> yeah, because we've talked about that here is – my spirit trips usually are this is neat this is neat this is neat all right you guys done yeah cool like 100 <laughs> percent. i i went there with my friend I can't yesterday afford any of that shit yeah, are you to, serious tonight my friend's having like a rager of a halloween party it's like their first yeah. one in a bit because their kids are finally at the age where they can just like go and sleep over grandma's yeah. house and it's not like a fucking burden because they're like eight and 12 you know what i mean like it's like yeah, yeah you're just going chill. yeah you're just going somewhere else we went into spirit of halloween just to see like hey do we need like some fog machine do we need a fog machine do we need black lights like yeah is there anything that's worth buying to like add to the clown room because they have a whole where where all of the uh where all the smoke happens uh is in the clown room and they've just collected a bunch of creepy ass clown shit and decorate their whole basement with it nice, nice. um Love so it. lucky for those people getting stoned they get to be surrounded by clowns <laughs> while doing it um but uh, while we were there, I was just taking pictures of like throw blankets and coffee mugs and shit that I yeah. liked and was like, November 1st, I'm going to come back and see like, what's if the price looking like on yeah. these? Yeah. Like, oh, the the doormat that's Haunted Mansion theme that says yeah. our tour begins here. Yeah. That's going outside my house November right. 1st. You know what I mean? Oh, like, dude, it finally happened. I had friends that went down to Disney. I now own a pair of Haunted Mansion Crocs. Finally. Nice. They're Finally. Only Crocs I own, and I fucking love them. <laughs> Dude, they're so dope. They're so awesome looking. All uh, right. Black Christmas. Black Christmas. <laughs> I mean, we can start to wrap it up. It's almost 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, so like the one thing I do want to talk about is um, Black Christmas, of course, directed by the legendary Bob Clark, who also went on to direct um, A Christmas Story. Uh, absolute classic. We both love A Christmas Story. We've talked about that. Um Recently, they have put out a teaser for another Christmas story. Yeah. And my thought is, is like, why? In my opinion, <laughs> Christmas story holds up because of the way it was done. Like, I don't think you could do that without Bob Clark or somebody with his sensibilities. Um, specifically with those characters. Like, we've seen 8 Bit no. Christmas, we've talked about it compared to the two. And, and and we both really liked Eight Bit Christmas. Eight Bit Christmas is my Christmas story too. I don't need yeah. someone to. It's for the people who are excited for Christmas Story Two. Let me tell you about a little movie called Christmas Vacation Two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, sometimes it's and best also, to just let. Already those... a Christmas Story Two. I like, thought that done... there was. I... <laughs> it was done with the um, oh, what's his face from um Daniel Stern. Yeah, Daniel Stern. Daniel Stern played the dad in a Christmas Story Two. And honestly, if if you want to be truthful about it, this is like the fifth movie in the Christmas story like lineage because they did like a summer story type deal. Like there's there's like five movies with these same characters in it. I don't need another Christmas story because to me that movie's not about Ralphie. It's not about that family itself. It's about like you being able to put yourself in the shoes of this family and reliving Christmas in a 1950s household. And that's kind of what stands out with it. I, you and I have talked about it before. What works about a Christmas story is that it's basically like a series of vignettes. And, and I'm, I'm, I just jumped on the Wikipedia page for a Christmas story Christmas. Is that the and new one? Yeah. A Christmas Story Christmas? Yeah, that's, that's what, what the full called? title is. Yeah. Um, that's stupid. It's being produced by <laughs> Vince Vaughn. It's intended to Why? be a legacy sequel to the 1983 A Christmas Story and serves as the eighth film installment yeah. overall in the Parker yeah. Family franchise. Jesus. 
Um, but then this is the sentence that made me real, real uncomfortable because this usually isn't a sign of quality to me. Yeah. And uh, my apologies to these countries. But it says, principal photography commenced in late February 2022 in Hungary and the Republic of Bulgaria. Mm. You know how... You know how that's going to give us that old 1970s Christmas vibe. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm saying. Like, and look, if if you look at the cast, they're like, "Hey, we're bringing everybody back." I'm like, dude, I it's, (laughs) I'm sorry, I do love a Christmas story, but I don't need to see like Peter Billingsley as Ralphie again. Well, the Zach Ward as Scott Farkas, like. I don't need it. Flick's Scott, coming sorry. back. The man's name sorry, is Scott. Scott. <laughs> My bad. Scott. Um, like fucking Flick's coming back. Schwartz is coming back. Like I, yeah, porn I do star love Scotty this movie. Schwartz is returning to the franchise. <laughs> but I'm not. This is not one of those movies that I'm like, holy shit, they got them all back. <laughs> yeah. Like. Well, like the other thing that I don't. There's going to be a fucking Avengers scene at the end where they're like, yeah, on your left, and it's fucking scuts. <laughs> fucking I, down. well, like the other thing with this that just like drives me up a wall. Well, there's two things that drive me up the wall. Number one is that yeah. I know that we're probably going to have to watch it and talk about it on the show. Oh, yeah. But... We're not. Do... This is. Okay. We've talked about this before because we've had to stop ourselves. This is 100% going to be something that you and I watch and record during the Christmas season. That episode's not coming out. Till no, fucking, that's some like, like, like January, February, <laughs> March yeah. shit right there. Well, that's, I, I mean, I will pat us on the back. We are doing a really good job. I mean, obviously, we're recording this Black Christmas episode a week before it comes out. Yeah. But like, if we keep with the schedule that I think we're going to keep with with these Saturday mornings, we will get to yeah. a point where we've got all of our December shit our November, December shit done by like the second week of November. And then it's just like, Hey, this new Christmas thing came out. Let's just watch it and record an episode and bank it for January. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. going to be our sweet spot. And it's uh, going to feel good guys. You're going to feel us in the, cause we're, we will be recording some of those in the midst of the Christmas season. season. So we're, we're versus like, we're feeling it. <laughs> fucking versus- March. <laughs> Yeah, March and April are, I would say those are the toughest months for us. A yeah. little bit of May. Then, like, we're getting, like, that, ooh, it's spring and summer happiness. Yep. And it's like, all right, I, I'm feeling, I'm missing Christmas again. January you know, and February, we're just too, it. we're just too in the thick of, of the yeah. sadness that Christmas is over. It's true. It's true. <laughs> but I'm excited with, like, what's coming next, dude. It's, it's, by the time everybody's hearing this, it's October 31st. And you yeah. know what tomorrow is, dude? It's the first it's Christmas. day of fucking Christmas. It is so fucking Christmas. So you need to Christmas. get ready. Take out your Christmas lights. Throw the ghosts in the goddamn box. Get ready because Christmas 365 is coming at you. And dude, I can't wait to talk about what we're going to talk about next week. Dude, I am looking at basically there's there's one spot that hasn't been filled in our schedule for November, yeah. December just yet. But man, do we have, we've got a stack November, December this year for you guys. Like, Dude, stay fucking tuned. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. Like, it is just, it is, I, it, we're on, we're hitting stuff that I feel like we've held off on. That we've been like, we're going to keep this. We're going to keep this to ourselves. I can, we're shaking. I can categorically <laughs> tell you that my two picks, my two picks, I have been holding on wanting to talk about for months. So I'm yeah. like, no, they need to be the November and December picks. They oh, just have to yeah, dude. So. so, guys, I know that much like all the time, we got off track with our Black Christmas episode, but there's not much you can really say. I mean, it's a classic. Watch it if you haven't seen it. Um, it definitely inspired a lot of the horror movies that every we we know and love today. Uh, check it out, man. It's, it's basically streaming everywhere, like any free... Um, streaming service, Roku, Pluto, Tubi, whatever the hell. It's on there. It's on Shutter, And also, Screen Factory did a great Blu-ray. Yeah. Happy Black Christmas, Dylan. <laughs> Happy Black Christmas, Matt. Whoa. Oh, whoa.
You're listening to the Geekscape Network. 